Hey folks, this is episode two of the Appalachian Roundup. We're going to talk about hunger in Appalachia. We're going to look at two news articles. One, a Washington Post news article about Eastern Kentucky, and the other one is a Blue Ridge Public Radio news broadcast article uh, about Western North Carolina. If you read these articles back to back, you get a pretty grim picture of the of the situation in Appalachia in terms of hunger. There's a lot of hungry people. In fact, millions of Americans go hungry, and there just happens to be, or it doesn't happen to be, there are a concentrated number of hungry people in Appalachia. And the problem is it's going to get worse, especially as the summer goes on, if inflation continues to rise or stay high, and especially, and here's the key point, especially as the government both at the federal level and the state level, start to remove supports and aids to people that have, um, that have since the, at least the pandemic, provided emergency support for food and unemployment. Once those things are removed, it creates conditions that basically create a more hungry, hungry population. Here's a quote from the Washington Post about Kentucky. With Kentucky serving as a warning beacon, Social service agencies and charities across the country are now preparing for a summer of misery as food prices continue to soar due to inflation. Both news articles highlight this very issue of the end of pandemic aid um, and how this will worsen situation for many people and really increase the number of hungry people in Appalachia. Some states like Kentucky voluntarily cut their own aid or voluntarily stopped receiving federal aid, emergency aid, um, early. Other states have continued to receive the aid. Um, All of the states will stop receiving aid in March. And that's the point at which, um, in March, that the issue of hunger all across the country will kick in. Uh, Again, concentrated in Appalachia. Blue Ridge Public Radio uh, had a great quote that highlighted the situation there. Quote, food banks and nonprofits in Western North Carolina are preparing for a wave of food insecurity in March when supplemental nutrition assistance programs, or SNAP, emergency benefits that began during the pandemic come to an end. According to the North Carolina Health and Human Services Department, um, 900,000 North Carolinians have received food aid since the beginning of the pandemic and the emergency aid. And in the K- Kentucky, the situation is worse, uh, is even worse, I would say, um, as the article in the New York Times, I'm sorry, the Washington Post article highlights or is t- you know, highlights in the title that the food line, the people waiting in line for food was a mile long. Okay, how, how do you get a mile long, uh, you know, uh, line of people looking for food? Or in North Carolina, how do you get 900,000 people um, you know, who are hungry, who need food aid. How does that happen, you know? One of the key ways that this happens is the actions taken by lawmakers. Here's a quote from the Washington Post news article uh, that highlights the role of the Kentucky legislature. Quote, Kentucky lawmakers had voted to end the state's health emergency last spring, by default cutting food stamp benefits created to help vulnerable Americans weather the worst of COVID-19. Instead of $200 a month, those in need get just 30. And again, the Post article highlights how 40, over 40 million Americans receive food aid and they have received this emergency food aid again since the pandemic. And once this ends in March, um, then the number of hungry people across the country will dramatically increase, uh, especially if inflation continues and so forth. Um, and, then, and again, this is more concentrated and more intense socially and politically uh, and what people feel for themselves um, in a place like Appalachia. And in terms of how people feel and what their experience is, the Post had a great quote um, that encapsulated, I think, some of the ways that, uh, some of the situations that people find themselves in, the hardships. Quote, for those waiting in line for food in Kentucky, the last year has been jarring. Since the Kentucky legislature cut benefits early, some said they can now only afford to eat once a day, 
Others limit expensive items like meat for specific family members like growing teenage boys, all described feeling hunger. You know, if I had to look at these two articles, or when I did look at these two articles side by side, um, you know, the, the, the title that I would give them, if I, you know, if, if they were under one umbrella title, is something like, Government Cuts to Food Benefits Make Appalachians Hungry. I want you to consider, or I'm, at least I consider, and I think it's important to consider, what are the ideological mainsprings of, uh, of, a, of a political strategy where a legislature focuses on um, cutting food benefits, and in the case of Kentucky, cutting unemployment, uh, cutting unemployment benefits the number of weeks down to, I think it's 12 weeks in Kentucky, um, and I think it's something like uh, 12 or 16 in North Carolina. Uh, you just have a situation where the legislature itself is um, essentially attacking working class people and poor people, uh, people who depend on unemployment benefits the most, people who depend on food aid the most. Um, and so you have a legislature directly targeting those groups of people. And so you, with, with policy, now I can understand now there's a lot of people I know, or at least some people I know, who blame the hungry essentially for their, for their suffering. Um, you know, they blame the hungry or the somebody who doesn't have a job or, or somebody who isn't able to work or whatnot, uh, who receive uh, some kind of like social benefits, welfare, SNAP, whatever, whatever the benefit is. But I know people who blame those people for their suffering. And, you know, because everybody, I guess, knows somebody who takes advantage of a system. Um, but when you look at the fact that there are 40 million Americans who are hungry, and then you think about of that 40 million, you know, of that number, uh, a disproportionate chunk are in Appalachia. You know, so thinking about how that comes to be is, is important to consider, but also thinking about how our legislatures in Appalachia um, or in the states that are in Appalachia, how our legislatures respond to that group of people. Um, you know, and I think one of the ways or, you know, one of the things that I'm cons interested in in terms of reading these two articles has to do with, like, what is it that informs this type of, the strategy of, uh, of cutting food aid and cutting unemployment um, when, you know, what informs that? I want you to stretch with me for a second here. Um, and, and basically, the idea, I, here's what I'm going to argue. The, the idea that, um, that we can and should use hunger as a way to push people into the labor market. That idea comes from 18th century England. And it comes from a guy named Joseph Townsend. And he was, let's just call him a political economist, political philosopher of the day. Um, and he was in conversation with Adam Smith and had some disagreements and overlap and so forth. Um, but, but one of the ways that he changed Adam Smith's thinking or changed Adam Smith's, or ch changed the conception of capitalism that was prevalent at the time was that he conceptualized people as animals that could be stimulated, could be pushed, prodded to enter the workforce. And, um, you know, if you want to read somebody on this, look look at somebody, uh, a very important book uh, by a man named Carl Polanyi, and it's called The Great Transformation. It's a classic text. In particular, I think, look at chapter 10, and then there he talks, uh, Carl Polanyi talks about Joseph Townsend and, and sort of locates Joseph Townsend in some kind of context of, um, of political and economic thinkers. And basically the point, though, that, that Carl Polanyi makes and that I'm making here is that you know, 
what we're talking about here is a hunger economics um, uh, of treating people like animals and prodding them into the labor market by using hunger. Um, again, like a uh, cow is prodded into a loading truck through a chute. But, but the point though is here is uh, sort of using these hunger economics as a way to push people into, into the market, I think is an interesting and useful way to think about um, the pretty harsh, savage types of economic policies that you're seeing put into place in places like North Carolina, in places like Kentucky, um, especially as in regards to how those policies impact the poorest, most vulnerable people in our communities, in our country, in Appalachia, you know, in, who compose Appalachia, because Appalachia, um, on the whole, compared to the rest of the country, is older, poorer, uh, more addicted, um, you know, face in, any number of other problems. The point that I'm getting to here is many of those conditions, economically, are created by our politicians, the you know the people who uh, constituents elect, um, and because those politicians are informed by certain ideologies, and Joseph Townsend created a certain ideological way of thinking about economics, argued that hunger is this legitimate tool to use in order to prod people into the labor market. Uh, and, 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 you know, sort of to understand this, uh, Joseph Townsend is talking in a time period um, at the cusp between feudalism and markets when there are still peasants and people outside of capitalist markets. You know, we, on the other hand, are fully ensconced in uh, capitalist markets for the most part. Um, and so it's just, you know, it's interesting to think about how our politicians are using these, you know, tools to treat us uh, like animals. Effect. Townsend basically argued that hunger was a more effective tool to use compared to force. Force was loud. It was noisy. Um, it created resistance. Uh, you know, it had people smashing other people. Um, Whereas hunger was something that was uh, persistent, quiet, slow, and ultimately kind of an unremitting pressure that pushed people, again, into the labor market. Um, and so he thought that hunger was a far better tool to use um, as a policymaker in order to push people into the market, into the labor market. Um, and so Townsend had a very, uh, I think, a very harsh view of the world, especially in regards to the vulnerable, the hungry. Uh, he himself, of course, it should be, you know, <laughs> noted, was not one of the vulnerable. So, you know, he wasn't talking about himself. He was talking about these others, these poor people who uh, he didn't really quite see uh, as human, you know. And I think that's part of the problem with a lot of our legislatures today. They don't see the constituents they have as human. They see them as animals that need to be prodded into a labor market. Um, that's pretty unfortunate. If you like thought-provoking content like this, um, you know, hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you back here in a next video.